So let's start with a very fundamental question. What role does technology play in social change? And let's, uh, let's be self-critical. Let's ask if technology is really the most important thing out there. And I invite you to please make, make a list. Please take a, a pen and paper. It's always good to have a pen and paper close by when watching stuff, dense stuff like that. And make a list of what is more important than technology. Please. Go ahead. What is more important than technology? Well, we need to eat. Still cannot eat computers. That, that is very true. Shelters, very important. Well, for some, uh, more than less, but <laughs> there's some trade-offs. There's certainly a degree of freedom in, in the inter can be. So that's very important. Water, geez, actually water should have come before the shelter, right? And clean water. I mean, clean water. I mean, how, how many days are we going to make it? Health in general, like the pandemic showed us vaccine. I mean, that was more important. Uh, security, safety. Safety is also very important. Not going to make it very far. And, and, and if something happens, hopefully there's somebody close by who can fix it. And hopefully not a lot of things happen. I mean, the thing with the safety, if anybody ever lived in a war zone, and I can attest to that too, it's not I mean, like, what does technology actually? Oh, education, of course. Friendship, yeah, of course. And of course, love. All you need is love. That's what they say, right? I mean, many of us seem like we are married to our phone, but that I hope I hope it's clear that is an evolutionary dead end, right? <laughs> that does that won't get us very far as a species. Just to be extremely clear, if it just stays at the level of the phone. Right, we then have other responsibilities as as a species too. Then, <laughs> so yes, love is very like whoa, and that was just. But how quickly was that? So why do we spend want to spend all these hours talking about technology if all these other things are are more important than technology? Like, what are we doing here? Well, let's think about it. Why does technology matter? Well, with technology, we can and hopefully will create enough food for everybody. It will help us to become more productive. It will help us to, to finally still the hunger all over the world. And we'd also for the water and not, we can also go more advanced during the pandemic, we made this graph. It shows you the trade off between when people go to work or stay at home and when restaurants sign up for an online food delivery service. And you can see a very nice trade off, right? So the restaurants sign up, this is a Latin American food delivery service in Latin America, sign up for the service when there were lockdowns and not everybody is a great cook. I mean, gotta be honest, right? So uh, some of us uh, really like, I mean, this has been going on for many weeks and, and it's been very important. Technology helped us to get through that also in education, for example. So the pandemic started here in March, 2020, schools got shut down. This is this black line and then, well, took a nice break, a two month break, but then what are we gonna do at home sitting on our hands without any schools or colleges? And then you can see like, boom, how these uh, countries in Latin America again, how they signed up actually to educational services of another country. This is an American, a North American educational service, online educational service, and well, like after a good two month break, started to study again online and some schools and some countries were shut down for, for two years. So technology helped us to keep a minimum going. And we learned a lot about online education. And the same for healthcare, like talking about the COVID pandemic, here you can see like the digital mapping, digital tracing helped us a lot to get over it, especially before we, we had a vaccine and safety. Being very honest, not everybody is a great driver. Well, really self-driving cars, artificial intelligence. If one car learns to drive really well, just it's just copy paste, right? Right mouse buttons and all cars can. It's inevitable that self-driving cars will become much better drivers than humans. And AI will not go over the speed limit if you don't tell it to. There is hopefully, you know, no volition in AI. And why should it go? If it's that, that's the speed limit, there will be no, you know, like, why would we have a speed limit if you go over it? So that is, it, it. the promise is that the accumulative growth 
of driving knowledge will inevitably make our roads safer. And way too many people lose their lives or, or, or lose their biological abilities in, in traffic accidents. And of course, talking about love, yes, yeah, many, many of us found their significant other online with the help of intelligent recommender engines. So the idea here is that technology is a means to an end and information, communication, and knowledge technologies are also means to ends. They are not the end in itself. And that is actually a very old concept that the academic definition of, of this concept, what I'm trying to explain here, is called technological determinism versus social construction. What is this discussion about? Technological determinism versus the social construction of technology. Well, it, it says that technology itself is not inherently good nor bad. Technology doesn't have a predetermined outcome. So while maybe a few decades ago we would say the internet is a tool for freedom and to foster democracy, well, the oldest vision of the information or knowledge society actually comes from the year 19. 48 from a fiction author called George Orwell, which in, who in 1948 wrote a novel called 1984, where the big brother is watching you. That's where that comes from. And it was basically an informational dictatorship. So it said, well, if you have uh, observation, techno surveillance technology, you can build surveillance capitalism. He said it's a mix between governments and industries, which takes away all the privacy and base. Well, quite some foresight we know now, you know, several decades later. And so, what is it now? Is the internet a tool for democracy or freedom, or is the internet a tool for informational dictatorship? Well, the internet technology is neither good nor is it bad. Uh, technology does not have a predetermined outcome. Think about a more traditional technology, a hammer. Back when we were homo habilis, the handyman has started to distinguish ourselves from, from, from other animals because we started to use tools. And we, if we wanted to protect ourselves from the elements or also wanted to go hunting in a more sophisticated way, we needed to use tools, not that monkeys don't use, you now some sticks or hammers, but we really made a science out of it, an art out of it, using something akin to a hammer to build ourselves uh, something as, as akin to a shelter. Now, once you have something similar to a hammer, you can also do a lot of damage. You can really damage and hurt also others uh, of your peers with that. It's also a weapon. Now, that's not the fault of the hammer. A hammer is just a tool. And the internet is, is just the internet. Uh, so whenever somebody says that technology has or is has a property has something then is something then that is technological determinism that means that technology determines the outcome so if i say the internet is a tool for freedom the internet is a tool for surveillance then that would be technological determinism and we need to reject technological determinism because it, it, it is not this or that. And, and if you read the newspaper, it's full of technological determinism. Also out of my mouth, it sometimes comes out. But technology doesn't actually have a property. Technology has agency. So the internet can be used as a tool for democracy and equality. The internet can be used by humans as a tool for surveillance and you know the end of privacy it can be used so this is the social construction of technology so it's 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 very fine the reformulation but we have to be careful because it does sneak in and it's a really false friend to assume that it's the fault of technology to do this or to, to be this or, or, or that there, there you see how fine the line is now, it's also not that easy because, you know, guns are a technology that are made to shoot something, life, you know, to, to, to make life dead. Basically, that's what I mean. Why would you have a gun? Or uh, bombs are made to blow stuff up. 
um, to destroy things. I mean, that's why you have bombs. Now, they can be used for useful things. I mean, if you want to build a road or, or, or you want to like, you have to get over the mountain. I mean, it's, it's, it's useful, but it's still like, it's still there to destroy things. So that's why they say technology is neither good nor bad, nor is it neutral. Whew, what a headache, right? So uh, it is true that social construction of technology also says that it's not guns that kill things, it's humans that kill things with a gun. So that's also part of the social construction. So, but also the gun is made for, so, okay. So there's a, a fine line, but we won't go as deep into that. But what is really important to me here is that we humans understand that we have a responsibility in it. Uh, but that this responsibility is also a two-way road. To use the words of Marshall McLuhan, a communication scholar from, from my discipline, he is a tribute of saying, we shape our tools and then our tools shape us. So be careful what you bring into this world and accept the responsibility that we need to align this technology. Be it a hammer, be it the internet, or be it generative AI. It's the same challenge of social construction of technology.